Alright, so this is going to be part 4 to my Zeitgeist Heights. Now one of the things that Fresco says is that... Let me raise the brightness so that you can see my face. And one of the things that he says is that equality lowers violence. And equality is being used in an emotional context that people feel less equal. And so they engage in violence... It's a natural instinct. I like how he's using a more metaphysical term in a metaphysical context rather than people that use terms like freedom, which I already critiqued in my Liberty vs. Freedom video, in an objective context. And yes, I'm speaking very quickly, but I did multiple parts of this, and I just want to get done with this. In my opinion, inequity leads to violence. I mean, no, violence leads to inequity. What do I mean by that? When violence leads to inequity, it's because all those areas and all those inner cities with guys engaging in gang warfare or a lot of drunk guys getting into accidents. It often leads to stuff like insurance, taxation, and other stuff being raised, thus ruining it for everybody. In other words, when people are acting violently, it often hurts everybody. And sometimes, when everybody's being hurt, then everybody feels like they're less than somebody else. So you can say inequity, I mean, no, violence leads to inequity, which leads to inequality. And that's the big cycle. Another thing is that life sequence problems create profit. Now this is something that I should be complaining about because if stuff like cancer does have a cure and it isn't being made then it's just another idea of concept that a hierarchy is perpetuating itself and most institutions are like that that is to say it's a hierarchical problem and not a problem of profit motive. Why? Well, once the solution is found, those that are looking for that profit motive, it'll be over them for them. Why do we need all these corporations when the only reason we invested is for something that doesn't exist anymore? We invested the WWE because it was in a good era, but now it's in a bad era and it's in the red. Why should we have, inv have these states when now they're moving outside of a city context and they're perpetuating them themselves even though we already have the merchants and the people that are already doing the merchanting and the marketing and they already have what, most of what they want and need. Why should we have religious institutions once you've already learned that this is bad and this is also bad and you won't not think about it next time. You won't just go back into the streets to do hood rat stuff. And yes, I'm speaking in a layman's term. Why? Well, basically, if you were in a... If you were doing violence in the hood for most of your life, you were jumping people, often selling drugs, and not the legal kind, or not the legal kind, the, not the non-legal kind. And then all of a sudden you 
learn that this is bad and this is bad in very simple moralizing terms and you will think about it next time you won't just do it without questioning why should you need to continue going into that religious institution I mean religious institutions are useful in the sense that they're cheap with the exception of the ones that tithe and other unwanted stuff so if anything it isn't that profit motive creates life sequence problems it's hierarchies that perpetuate themselves that create life sequence problems another thing is the idea that cost efficiency creates cyclical consumption planned obsolescence that is because let's say you want to buy the cheapest possible table you can you're gonna get a really crappy one end up getting more and more tables or if you get the iPhone eventually that's gonna be replaced with an iPhone 2, iPhone 3, iPhone 4, iPhone 5 when I heard about the 5 I was like what the hell that was like five minutes ago that the 4 existed you could easily modify these things it's not very hard to modify a computer or software or program into being at its most updated level I mean I try to do it and I effed up but then again I'm very clumsy about things but even then I was pretty close the problem isn't as much cost efficiency as much as it is real property why well when there's real property you're basically contracted and licensed to use whatever you bought but you can't necessarily do whatever you want with it what do I mean well if you have a program like Windows Movie Maker you can't also turn it into something that's how should I say a movie pro mu music program or update it so that you can have more than one audio being recorded at the same time multiple sequences of audio overlapping themselves because I know when I use Windows Movie Maker there were certain things I couldn't do I couldn't record my voice and then record some guitar playing and then record some drumming and bass playing I couldn't do that shit because I only had two channels of audio at best if I cheated a little and I know some people are gonna tell me well there's certain stuff you can do but I'm sure one of them's gonna involve something I really can't do because of real property let's think about it let's be honest and it also ha happens with hardware I know some people that can try to make I think a uh, certain consoles like let's say a GameCube backwards compatible but they can't do that because it goes against their licensing I mean I remember some guy could modify all his consoles into being really advanced and he and it would definitely go against his contract, it would definitely void it but that's what happens, so it shouldn't be that cost efficiency creates cyclical consumption and planned obsolescence but real property creates that shit All in all, what should I say about the zeitgeist, since I think this might be my last part. Wait, is it? Let me look. Hmm. I don't know. Oh no, definitely not. It's definitely not. 
Well, I don't know, I gotta say that Fresco has the advantage in that he knows what is and isn't the problem, but he doesn't know what's the main problem. He often blames the symptom and not the disease itself. He needs to think of more on the line of hierarchies and not the motive or incentive, profit motive, cost efficiency, and all this stuff. You should move a little less on the economics and a little more on the very sociology and politics behind it. Because when you see him shift towards that, then you notice his big fuck-ups. The way he confuses private property with personal property, which is a terrible fuck-up on anybody's part. And it oftentimes seems very, very humiliating. Because this guy is a smart 97-year-old pimp. He really is. Yet here he is making some trivial mistakes which are often quite horrifying especially knowing that he honestly doesn't have as much years left in him as he can, can't improve maximum he can live is probably 20 years or so or better yet yeah, like 28 years, but after that, it's impossible. <sighs> so, all in all, I'm probably going to move forward into other topics, but yeah, I'm done here. Now, this is no offense to guys from the Venus Project or Fresco himself. I actually think he's pretty good, but... Barbecue and BBQs? Sure, sure. Barbecue with baked potato? Yeah. I gotta go.